Today's the big day. We're at Sterling Caviar on Wilton, California. Today is Hatch Day. I can't wait to take you inside so we can see what's going on. We can check out all the little embryos. We're gonna help remove some of the debris. We're gonna start in the beginning and I'll show you how we got here. Seven days ago, crack of dawn in the morning. Stick around, you're gonna to wanna to watch this whole video. It's pretty awesome. circulating aquaculture system being maintained at 16 degrees. There's only so much water, and so it's really important to keep that water quality up. Uh, it might be um, 37 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Uh, it's really important that this water temperature is maintained and water quality during this critical period once the embryos have hatched. I feel like I've been doing this my whole life. Whether it's been doing it with frogs or fish, uh, I would say that I'm quite the expert at pipetting fish eggs. You too could go to college and uh, become an expert at siphoning fish eggs. Compared to teleos fish, sturgeon are a long-lived species and take a significantly longer time to mature and produce viable sperm and eggs. Male white sturgeon, seen here, can reach sexual maturity in captivity at four years. A stretcher is used to move and restrict sturgeon during examinations and spawning activities. The stretcher's hooded canopy covers the fish's head and serves as a respiration chamber when flooded with water. Once the sperm, which is also called milt, is extracted, it can be stored up to 12 hours at 4 degrees Celsius. Before sperm is used to fertilize eggs, it is examined under a microscope to determine its viability and concentration. A small amount of aerated fresh water is added to the semen, which activates the sperm. Viability counts are made after 30 seconds to quantify sperm motility to ensure egg fertilization. While sperm motility is being examined, let's check on the rest of the staff preparing for the harvest and fertilization of sturgeon eggs. Females of all sturgeon species spawn several times in their lifetime, but never spawn in consecutive years, as it takes longer than one year to produce mature eggs. Intervals of two to eight years between spawns are common for some species. Traditionally, white sturgeon in captivity spawn every two years. Once adult female sturgeon are ripe, they're hormonally injected and ovulation can be expected within 20 to 40 hours. After the abdominal area is disinfected, an 8 to 10 centimeter incision is made to expose the ovary. The eggs are gently removed with a large plastic spoon and they are placed in a dry stainless steel bowl. Care is taken while removing eggs to avoid injury to the internal organs of the sturgeon. After the eggs are removed, the incision is sutured and the sturgeon fish is provided with an antibiotic to prevent infection. Sturgeon sperm have a relatively short viable period following water activation. Preparations are made for sperm dilution in advance of fertilization, but the actual dilution of sperm with the water is not made until the moment of fertilization. During natural spawning, the sperm released by the male is immediately diluted in the aquatic medium. 
This dilution must be mimicked in the hatchery to avoid problems such as inactivation of semen. The milk used in fertilization should not be prepared until the eggs are taken and post-fertilization protocol is fully prepared. Once activated, the sperm must be used within a few seconds. Under normal circumstances, most sturgeon hatcheries use a 1 to 200 milk to water dilution. The eggs are fertilized by adding the diluted milk solution directly to the bowls containing the eggs. The mixture is slowly stirred by hand, and this could be continued for up to three minutes. Before fertilization is attempted, the material used in the egg de-adhesion process must be prepared and easily accessible. We have found that Fuller's Earth makes up a good de-adhesion material. Sturgeon eggs are sticky. The de-adhesion process is critical for the success of your hatchery. Traditionally, the preparation of the de-adhesion material must be performed before the eggs are fertilized. The container is filled with hatchery water at the temperature as close as possible to the temperature of the eggs, which is usually between 14 and 16 degrees Celsius. The fuller's earth is added to the water until suspension is formed and the residue of silt accumulates in the bottom of the container. To initiate the de-adhesion process, the silt suspension is poured into the fertilization bowl containing the fertilized eggs. At this time, the excess liquid is poured off and the de-adhesion process is started immediately. This mixture is then stirred gently by hand. Due to the environment and the warming hands, it's important to monitor temperature throughout the process. This process will go on for 45 minutes. It is important to not stir too vigorously during the de-adhesion process, because when stirred too rapidly, one can unintentionally create genetic triploids. Keep your eye out for a future video on how to prevent polypoidy in sturgeon aquaculture. At the end of the process, the eggs will have lost all stickiness and the bowl containing the eggs is then flushed with hatchery water until the water runs clear. The eggs will exhibit a fine coating of silt, especially around the vegetal pulp, but most of the silt coat will eventually be lost in the incubation process. It's important to remove the silt suspension from the eggs before they are moved into the egg jars. To do this, the bowl of eggs is tilted slowly and the suspension is poured off. After de-adhesion, the eggs are counted by volume. Regularly three replicate counts are recommended. The entire spawn is then measured by volume using a 1000 milliliter graduated beaker. The total number of eggs is calculated by dividing the total volume of the average egg count obtained from the early volume counting. Most North American sturgeon hatcheries use adaptations of the McDonald's egg incubator. 
McDonald jars provide the egg movement necessary to discourage fungal development and allow the adjustment of water flow as needed to vary the degree of egg movement based on the volume of the egg in the jar. Once the egg jars are put on the shelf, the inflow valves are then turned on and the water flow is adjusted to 30 to 40% exchange per minute. The egg should exhibit an even flow or mix, but should not be kicked up into the water column. As the eggs develop, they'll become more buoyant, and the water flow is then adjusted until the eggs are gently swirling and mixing throughout the lower half of the jar. White sturgeon embryo development is surprisingly rapid, and these eggs will hatch in about seven days. For more information about sustainable sturgeon farming at Sterling Caviar, check the links in the description. For UC Davis Aquaculture, I'm Dr. Jackson Gross.